hell of a game. Um, obviously, uh, you know, we did a lot of great things at the beginning. Uh, second half was tougher. Fourth quarter was, uh, you know, was uh, a situation where they were going to keep coming. Uh, we knew it. And it was a matter of, you know, bend, bend, not break, and uh, and hang in there. I mean, Hero hit a couple of fallacious shots, but guys at this time of year in these moments do those kinds of things. And, uh, you know, our guys, uh, our guys held up. It's a huge win for us. Rick, you guys have had a, a lot of close losses since the All-Star break. What did you see that stood out to you in the final minutes to actually get you guys over the hump tonight? Well... We kept it. We kept attacking. Um, you know, I should say, in, in situations where we're able to keep attacking aggressively, we we're having success offensively. Um, when we slowed down, we had we had some some struggles, and so, you know, we had to make some adjustments. And you know, this this game was is a great simulator of playoff basketball. I mean, everything's going to be hard. Everything's going to be. Um, contested, um, everything's going to be physical. Um, you're going to have a lot of, you know, um, you know, thread the needle, officiating calls that that happen that are, you know, fr a fraction, you know, from going your way, or you know, and it's just um, all those emotions um, make make you know meaningful games at this time time of the year. Um, very challenging, and uh, our guys maintained their poise. We weren't perfect down the stretch, but we did what we needed to do. Feels like I'm asking you about TJ all the time recently, but tonight you closed with him late. He was huge in both halves. I mean, what continues to stand out about how he is changing games for you guys? He's he's playing great. You know, he's just simply playing at a at a at a very very high level. Um, he gives us a, a consistent lift and. You know, the decision to go back with him it was it had nothing to do with anything Drew was doing wrong or anything like that. It's just, you know, he was one of our best players clearly uh, in this game, and, and having him in there made sense. So, um, you know, happy for him. Um, with three games left, you know, we're, we're, we're in control of what happens. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a great, it's a great position to be in, but it's uh, – you know, there's there's a lot of challenges ahead. What kind of message did you have in the locker room after this game about the task at hand for this last week after a win like that? Well, it's just it's just pretty obvious that, you know, right now, um, you know, heading into Tuesday, um, you know, it's a game we desperately need, and you know, Toronto Toronto is a team that's that's very capable, even though they've had a bunch of losses. I mean, they just won in Milwaukee two nights ago or whatever it was, so. We got to be ready for that, and we got to really take things moment by moment here. Uh, we're not going to look ahead. We're not going to look beyond the next challenge. Um, but this was uh, this was an important game, an important effort for us, and uh, guys stuck together and, and got it done. Just to keep on the, uh, the keeping together portion, I guess what where did you see guys signs of growth tonight in terms of you know you talked about this being a playoff similar where did you see like signs of maturity i guess the signs that these guys have gotten better in these circumstances yeah i, I liked our poise um down the stretch when things got tough um our our, our timeouts were 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 very uh, level-headed and and guys were were engaging with each other on, on the things we needed to do and look we made mistakes i mean and part of Part of growth is making mistakes. So there are some learning situations here, um, some certainly some teaching situations. And, you know, we, we've got to use all that material to our advantage. Um, we certainly could have played better, but uh, we, we played well enough to win. And, uh, you know, we got it done. And that's, that's the important thing. Miles goes for 22 and 13. Obviously, he has two key free throws when you needed to have him. And just how important was he on both ends tonight? And, and as well as on the glass, especially early, given that big lead. Miles was terrific. He was really solid defensively. I mean, you know, Adebayo sc scored scored some points, but um, you know, Miles made those baskets baskets that he needed to earn. <laughs> you know, he really did. And uh, he also had a big uh, Miles had a big rebounding night. So he had you know 
22 and 22 and 13. I mean, those are monster numbers. And uh, you know, he's one of our he's one of our best players. And you know, at this time of year, um, your best players need to need to shine. You mentioned, you know, before, obviously, the, the first half you hold them to 46. Obviously, they, they get some hellacious shots in the second half, but obviously you set a tone there and build a lead that you're able to hold on to. I mean, just what stood out to you about just the presence, again, and, and what you guys were able to do on the glass in the first half to build that lead? We got a good start. Um, the crowd was great. The energy in the building was high level. Um, you know, we, we, got a, we got some momentum, and we're able to double down on, on the momentum. Um, you know the last the last play of the half was uh, was uh, unfortunate. You know we we um, we ended up giving them a three. You know so it went from twenty to seventeen, and you know that probably gave them um, a little momentum starting the second half. But first five minutes, you know we played it pretty well. I think we were up one during that stretch, um, and then you know Butler went to work doing what he does. He was drawing fouls. They were. You know, they ended up in the bonus, you know, with scoring with the, with the clock stopped. And then the shot making, you know, I mean, Jovic hit, a, hit one that was really difficult and Hero hit two or three, you know. But this time of year, you've got to expect that players are going to do those kinds of things. And then when they do, you know, you you, you got to keep your poise and stay aggressive and do the right thing at the other end. The Heat had cut the lead to eight, and Obi Toppin hit back-to-back three-pointers and then had that nice little backdoor pass to T.J. McConnell. How have you seen him kind of grow this season, especially from where he started as a starter now coming off the bench, and then what he's done with Benedict being out and how his scoring has been more of an uptick there with the second unit? Obi's grown in all areas. Um, you know, when he came here, we talked about defense and rebounding being two things that we felt um, were, were areas where he had a much higher ceiling. He's doing be- significantly better in both of those areas. Um, but, he's a, you know, he's a special player, a guy 6'10", who can you know, dribble, make plays, pass it, um, has feel, you know, made a tough mid-range shot in the first half when we were reeling on one possession, hit a couple big threes. You know, so he's, he's, a, he's a guy that, you know, I really love, really love as a player. Miles, yesterday you told us how fun this type of year, time of year can be. What? Let me take me through how you're feeling after a win like that, and how important it was for this team. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, we're excited about the win, but we know where we're at. You know, I think that we control our own destiny. Um, I think that more than anything is going to the city. You know, I know it's such a rival, like a storied rivalry and whatnot. And um, you know, I think the fans really showed up tonight. You know, it was a uh, that fourth quarter was electric. You know, it was fun, but um, you know, we still got business to take care of. Losses since the All Star break. What did you feel like you guys did better in the final couple minutes of this one today? Um, well, I think we executed offensively pretty good, but defensively, you know, there was a couple of just errors, and um, they weren't even like positional stuff. It was just like just um, just a couple of just like boneheaded errors, if you will. You know, that just you know we know we made those mistakes, and you know, we'll make them going forward. But I think as a whole, our defensive you know effort you know was there tonight, you know, from start to finish. Played 37 minutes and had a double-double at halftime. How would you describe maybe your focus level entering a game like this and how you're feeling going into today? It was very high. You know, I, I, um, I, knew, I knew the stakes were high today. Um, you know, just, just playing through some injuries just um, this time of year is just something that's just, you know, um, I feel like it's just necessary. You know, I feel like everybody's dealing with something right now. So um, these are the games you have to, you know, bunker down and win. But the one thing that Rick kept mentioning was just poise that, down the stretch of the fourth quarter. I mean, obviously, when, when they're getting going, they're hitting some shots, they're coming back on you, you've lost a 22-point lead. You know, that's the time when it can go sideways. I mean, what kept things from going sideways for you guys and the, you know, the fact that you guys were able to answer some of the blows down the end and hold together? Yeah, I think our focus is high. You know, even on, even as something as little as making your free throws down the stretch. You know, I think that was big. Um, I think um, we did a good job of getting downhill, you know, reading their defense and whatnot. But our focus level was uh, very high tonight, and I think that showed across. Uh, for, for such a young team, I think we showed a lot of maturity tonight. What, uh, I mean, obviously, you hit two of those free throws. You had a couple of big shots, I think, in the fourth quarter that you know, kept the lead a, a little bit higher than it was. I mean, just how much did you kind of put, your, put on yourself as a veteran down the stretch? How do you feel like you executed just to keep everybody kind of level? Yeah, um, you know, I really feel like I didn't have to say much, you know, which was, you know, honest, honestly refreshing. You know, I think everybody really was dialed in, you know. I think sometimes, you know, when you come to games, you know, you, there's entertainment during timeouts, right? You're looking around, you're looking at Jumbotron. I think the guys weren't really even doing that tonight. I think everybody was really just locked in, you know. Our bench was dialed in, you know, celebrations. That type of stuff matters this time of the year. And I think that, like I said, everybody kind of just uh, 
uh, knew what the, what was at stake tonight. What um, you, you hold them to forty six in the first half, and obviously they get going eventually. Hero hero hits some shots. Jimmy does his thing. But I mean, what what do you think allowed you guys to get out to that lead in terms of you know holding them back in the first in you know the first two quarters? Um, again, that's just high level focus. You know, shot making is one thing, but I, I really think defensively. You know, we made our stand in that first half, and um, that's why we were able to jump out to such a great lead just because of our uh, attention to detail there. I think we obviously ask you about TJ all the time and what he was able to do, but I mean, like, where would you be without the guy? I mean, how very <laughs> cool was he tonight? Yeah, in, in yeah, no. Um, I think TJ is someone who's just very consistent. You know what I mean? I think that he provides a consistent level of energy night in and night out, and uh, something that we've really, really rely on. You know, as a team, and um, I really think TJ has just uh, really found himself. You know, to that, as a complete player, I just think I just, this is the most confident I've ever seen him. You know, I, even years past, if he like missed a shot, like he get in his own head, he'd be mad or. I mean, I've seen him. I've seen him turn down threes in the past, but he's just so aggressive, and um, I think he's really flipped the switch. And I'm, I'm really happy to see him at this stage of his career, really just uh, take on that level that's always been there. You know, uh, TJ always likes to remind you that you've never blocked him uh, I'm sure before. Him that. Yeah. From <laughs> from your perspective, like what makes him so hard to guard? He's very unassuming. You know, I think that. He jump, He elevates so much on his jump shot. You know, when he gets downhill, he's able to get to his spots, and he's just it's like ninety percent. You know, when it comes off his fingers, and um, I think that um, he's able to get downhill. He has such an array of finishes around the basket. A couple of crazy finger rolls tonight, and inside finishes, and I think he takes it personal as he's white boys guarding him. That's just another thing I think I see with him too. I think that's a like he wants to be the white boy. You know what I mean? So yeah. <clears throat> um. Uh, Miles, you've blocked over 400 players in your career. Is there anybody in that list that you're like especially proud of? Any favorite blocks among your many? Um, yeah, I had a. Um, his name is Antonio Blakely. He was a. He's a decent player. He's, I remember he was in my high school cl or high school class before me, and um, I blocked his shot like to win the game in Chicago. Uh, like I think it was like my third or fourth year, but it was literally. I think they were only down by two, and like he shot the ball in my hands, I blocked it, buzzer sounded, and that was like a, a big moment because I was a bit in that time. It was a big win for us, and um, you know I think it was just one of the ones I vividly remember, if you will. TJ, you guys have had a couple close losses since the All Star break. What stood out to you about the difference in you guys' late game execution today, and you were even in the game for a lot of that? Um, I mean, I think tonight uh, was definitely a playoff type game, um, playoff type atmosphere, and. Um, it was good for us to be on the right side of one of those. Um, you know, we've the one against Chicago hurt, and you know a few of them down the stretch. Um, but the maturity we showed to, you know, take it one possession at a time and and get the stops that we needed, and you know the free throws down the stretch were huge too. So, um, you know, credit to the coaching staff, they had us ready, and um, now it's just we got to take it one game at a time. You mentioned the coaching staff having you guys ready. Did this feel different for you guys, like right before the game in the locker room? Was there any talk about how particularly important this one was beforehand? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we're all aware of the standings, um, but at this point, they're all they're all big. Um, you know, obviously, where us and Miami line up, um, we're all aware of that. But um, you know, like I said, at this point. Um, there can't be any slip up, you know, in any game. What's it out to you about Miles, the way he started this game and how he was kind of important for you guys all night? I mean, what he does for us on both ends, uh, what do you have 22 and 13? Um, and the presence he has at the rim, um, he was he was great. And he's as elite of a shot blocker um, as, they, as they come. I mean, he's he's been unbelievable for us this year. and. Um, made some timely timely plays for us as well. What uh, just Rick talked a lot about poise as being the big reason why you guys were able to hold this on. I mean, what what stood out to you in terms of you know how you guys showed that in the fourth quarter, basically when they're charging back and they're you know heroes hitting crazy shots and they're getting three shot fouls. I mean, in terms of how you guys held it together, what stood out as you know moments wise in terms of what made that happen? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I feel like Rick just kind of was preaching, you know, one possession at a time. And, you know, um, you know, if it's a bad possession, move on from it and focus on the now. And, and I think we did that. We, we knew Miami was, wasn't going to go away. It's just not who they are. Um, they're so well coached with Spo and, and they run great stuff. They got great players, obviously. So they knew, we knew they were going to come charging back and 
we just had to be ready for it, and I thought we did a good job of it. You obviously seem to be able to get roll in the middle against their against their zone in the first couple quarters. Maybe like what worked out for you there in terms of just the spacing being there. It seemed like you were able to just to get around maybe one guy, get downhill and get a some clean space where you usually like to shoot the ball. And just what kind of how did yeah. that kind of play into what you want to do? Um, you know, typically in zones there's spaces that you can attack, um, and was just trying to you know kind of survey it and, and see where I can get to those open spots and. Um, either kick it out for a three or get to my pull-up and just tried to read the game. That's really it. Just what stood out to you guys about what you did defensively? Obviously, so they eventually got going, but to hold them to 46, obviously that puts you in a position you know, that, that you have a lead to hold on to. Just what stood out to you there in terms of what you did to slow them down in the first couple? I feel like it was just a lot of one-shot possessions um, you know, they, and, and keeping them off the free-throw line. Um, those two things. Um, you know, and we limit them to one shot and, and keep them off the free throw line. We get out and do what we do extremely well, and that's playing transition. So, um, you know, like I said, the coaching staff had us ready to, you know, they, they get to the free throw line, especially Jimmy. Um, and we just had to be locked in for that. And I thought we did a good job in the first half of executing that and getting out and running. Uh, what does preparation look like for games like this? It's a good question. Um, you know, obviously they're all very big games. Um, and the attention to detail is so critical. Um, but at this point in the season where we're at in the standings and for where we're trying to go, um, you have to be locked into every minute detail. And um, the coaching staff does a great job of that. And um, I feel like we were, we were, we were locked in tonight um, on every detail, but the teams that go the furthest are, are locked in every single night, and we have to continue to do that. Your chemistry with Obi Toppin seems to really be developing over the last couple of games. He's been shooting the ball really well. What have you seen from Obi, and how has that chemistry kind of grown over the last couple of games? Yeah, I'm a big Obi Toppin fan. He, he makes the game easier for, the, for point guards. Um, his ability to get out and, and run the floor and cause mis mismatches in transition and, you know, we're able to throw it over the top to him. And then, you know, when teams leave him open, he knocks it down at a high clip. Um, he's just, a, to put it simply, he's just a really good player um, and makes our life easier, um, you know, as point guards and definitely glad he's here. Uh, Miles said that uh, he thinks you take it personal when you have uh, white boys guarding you, and he said he thinks you want to be the white boy. Do you have any response to that? Um, oh, Miles. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean that's just that's uh, that's classic Miles. That's really uh, that's really all uh, all I got for you on that one. What went into being able to finish these guys off after all the runs that they had? Just playing a full 48 minute game. I mean, it's a game of runs. We really kind of dominated the whole game, and then they made their run in the third and fourth quarter, and we stood strong, and you know, we, we withstood it. Don't spend a lot of time talking about the free throw line, but it was really pivotal tonight. You guys go 20 of 21. In a two point game, you could argue it was one there. I mean, your thoughts on just the ability to step up there and knock them down all night, not just you, but the whole team? Well, I mean, it's what we do. It's a, you know, it's our job to make those free throws, and um, you know, it's going to be a lot of more clutch moments, and it's good that we were able to come up big. Um, so just have to keep playing like that. For a younger team, I know there are far bigger goals than just to win like tonight, but this was a really important one. What does it do for the confidence here in the locker room? Uh, I think with every game we build confidence, just playing together. Um, but a game like tonight, getting this big time win, a must win game for us. Um, you know, we had this one marked for the coming weeks, and um, it's just it's exciting. You know. As you look forward here, one week left in the season, three games, you put yourself in a good spot because of tonight, but what's it going to take to finish it off? Uh, go 3 0, continue working. Um, you know, like you said, it doesn't stop now. We still got to prepare and get better for the playoffs. We still got things we need to work on um, so we can take these three games, work on them, win them, and move forward. Uh, one of the bigger games you've, you've played and get to win. How does it feel for you right now? It uh, feels good. feels good. And I think that at the end of the day, like, this is one of those games that it doesn't matter how you get it. You just got to get it, you know. And uh, obviously we had a big lead that dwindled, uh, you know, some moments there that uh, the game could have swayed either way. And I think that we just dug in and found a way to win, so that's big for us. Uh, we're right back to where we were, you know, in terms of being able to control our own destiny. And, um, you know, with three games, three games, three games left. 
we're three games left. I think that the biggest thing for us is just to take it one game at a time, like we've been saying, take it a day at a time, um, and, and just you know worry about what's in front of us. We're in complete control, so um, you know we just got to handle business. You Rick, talk about that how and those at least close games haven't gone your way since the break. What stood out to you about what you guys were able to do down the stretch this time compared to? Uh, I think just digging in defensively. I mean, I think it helped obviously that we jumped off to a big lead, and um, you know we just made you know timely we had timely stops there in the second half that really helped allow us to put, put together some runs. TJ and our second group were really big. Um, Obi was amazing. I think we just had a lot of guys contribute, and um, you know I think that's just a kudos to the depth of our team, which we've continued to talk about all year. But we just had a lot of different guys step up. So this is, like I said, it doesn't matter how you get it. We just want to see a win. Rick kept using the word poise. He said that's what really stood out to him down the stretch in terms of you guys holding on to it. What were the areas where you saw evidence of that and obviously, and also evidence of growth? I mean, where did you see kind of spots where, you know, like previous years, earlier this season, might have gone the other way that you guys stepped up and made the plays you had? Yeah, I think there's a lot of different guys stepping up making plays. Um, obviously, Aaron had an one. Pascal had an one. TJ was playing amazing. Uh, Obi made some big shots there at the end of the third. Um, I think we had a lot of different guys step up, you know, make plays when needed. So um, I think that's a, that's a really big part of it. And, uh, again, just speaks to the depth of our group and, you know, continuing to get better there. Thanks, guys. Good. Yeah, yeah.